The story begins when a man named manager Kim bows before a girl who fought with his daughter earlier, while his daughter tries to tell him that the other girl picked up the fight first. The girl's mother is yelling at him and asks the school management to form a committee to address school violence and to make sure this ends up with her record. The principal tells him that this is the third time his daughter, Minji fought Hyrie, and her father is quite famous in the country. There is even a rumor that he is dipping his toe into politics, and nothing good can come from escalating this. Kim gets so embarrassed that he apologizes to everyone present there. Minji gets angry with her father and says she doesn't want to eat and doesn't want to go to school. She asks him what is wrong with him because everyone else's dads are congressmen or chairmen and have so much power but her dad is a simple company manager. She starts crying and asks him why he was born when he had nothing to give her, and says he feels so pathetic to be his daughter. She leaves him there by saying she will be at Hire Young's place and asks him to not follow her. After some time when she was going to her friend's home, Hyrie and her friends block their path and she slaps her again. Minji grabs her hair and they both start fighting. But a boy comes forward and kicks her then falls her to the ground. His name is Minho and has a crush on Hyrie. He then grabs her from her head and starts beating her brutally, while all the others are watching them quietly. Suddenly, Hyrie comes up at full speed and throws a stone toward her that hits her head. There was blood everywhere and they get scared because she has died. They are now worried about what should they do to get out of the scene. He calls ahead of the crew who agrees to help them after hearing Hyrie is the daughter of Gang Chen Ju, the chairman of Giant Constructions. On the other side, Kim has prepared food and is waiting for her daughter to come so that they can have dinner together. The leader of the crew reaches there and says he is helping her because she is Mr. Ju's daughter, and says they will put her body in a machine and it will disappear from the earth. It was 12.30 and she has not come home, so Kim decides to find her by himself. He passes through the street where a lot of people gather there and talks about the blood spread on the road. He finds a rubber band on the floor and remembers it belongs to Hyrie, so he picks it up. She and Minho are walking on the road and he tries to persuade her that she just needs to keep quiet, and nobody will find out about this. They are going home when Kim appears there and asks them if they have seen his daughter, but Minho grabs him from his collar and says he scared him a lot. He then asks Hyrie if the rubber band belongs to her and tells her that he found this in an alleyway but Minho threatens him by saying to keep going the way he was going and no one will get hurt. He remembers the time when he first knew about his daughter and threatened his officers to let him go or he will kill him so. He got so frightened that he asked him to leave the military. And now, he stands up against a student for her daughter. Minho takes off his shirt and shows him his body and gets shocked when Kim removes his shirt. It is revealed that he was a sergeant in the army and is wanted in North Korea with a cash bounty on his head. And there are even special teams dedicated just for him in China and Russia. Now, he punches Minho so badly that he swings in the air, and then falls to the ground and asks him about his daughter. He folds Hyrie's hairband around his neck while she starts crying and requests him to let him free, but he asks them to give him directions about where they took his daughter. But Minho doesn't know where they took Minji and tells him everything about the head of the crew whom they have given her dead body. On the other side, crew's head Minchial is torturing a man and asking him to pay his loans as soon as possible otherwise. His daughter will be the one to pay the price. They have taken her there and say they are going to harvest and sell off her organs. Meanwhile, Kim reaches there and knocks at the door and a boy goes to Minchial and tells him that someone has come to see him but he asks him to send him off and close the door. Suddenly, they hear a sound on the other side of the door and Kim enters there while a man tries to attack him but he dodges him easily. He then attacks him back and punches his face and uses a rope to swing him through the ceiling while tying his feet. He asks the man about where is his daughter Minji, who doesn't even know a girl named Minji. Meanwhile, Minchial jumps off the wind and starts running away thinking he is a police and has found everything about them. But he gets stuck in something and falls to the ground and later, he realizes that Kim has set up a wire trap for them. Kim catches him and beats him until he opens his mouth and exclaims that he doesn't know about this because they only get messages through telegram and only when they are needed. He then asks him how they contacted them today and when he doesn't reply. He again starts torturing him and asks him to answer him. He then takes off his gun and calls himself a lawless middle-aged man. At first, he thought he will not shoot him but when Kin shoots his leg he gets shocked to see that he fired him and says he left him alive because he still believes that his daughter is alive. He then checks his phone where he saw a message that they are going to put Minji on the ship and that they have confirmed that she is dead. He reads the message and starts crying and after holding himself, he calls them but they don't answer the call because they think it's the police who are calling them. The boss asks others to don't answer any calls from crews for a while, and gets rid of all group chats, 
and Kim receives a notification that the chat no longer exists. He asks Minchiol why the chat disappears from the mobile, and he replies that they get rid of the group and there is no way to contact them. Kim furiously grabs him by his neck and asks him to contact them as soon as possible. He was beating him again and again when the man whom he was beating earlier appeared from behind and stabs a knife in his back. Minchiol asks him to stab him again until he dies and he asks him if he stabs him, then he has to forgive his death. He agrees and asks him to attack him one time more so that he dies but Kin gets up and takes out his knife from his back and is about to kill him when the police reach there. A policeman asks him to drop the knife and they call him there is an assailant with a knife. They take him to the police station and they blamed Kim that he tried to kill them and also had a gun. They check his record but find nothing, so they try to check through his fingerprint but he was blocked through the police record. They are shocked to learn that their country has something like this, and a man tells them that he has done all this to find his daughter. Suddenly, his phone rings, and when they check it, they tell him that the call is from his daughter. He gets out of control to hear his daughter's name and beats all of the police officers present there. The phone was still ringing, so he asks them to keep quiet and answered the call and calls his daughter Minji, but she doesn't respond to him. He calls her again and again but the computer says the person whom he is trying to call is not available. He runs away from there and after that, the officer scolds all of the police officers and asks them how a man took all of them down. He is worried about their reputations and what the people will think about them. Meanwhile, a man reaches there and shows his card to the officer, and then comes forward and slaps the officer and falls him to the ground. He then asks him if he is the head there. He is the director of the Bureau under National Special Operations and his codename is Groundhog. They have come there because in this police station, they tried to check Kim's data and now they reach there looking for him. They have confirmed his daughter's location and still searching for his cell phone's GPS coordinates. They locate his location and find that he is at Taekwondo Gym where a man is training the children. After that, the Taekwondo master Han Su Siong comes to him and asks him why he has come to him after a long time and he tells him that his daughter is dead. Meanwhile, the special officer outside the academy and Kim told Siong that he was the only friend he had, so he came to him first and he is trying to console him. He assures him that he will help him out to repay him for that and will talk to him after sending the children to their homes. Meanwhile, Groundhog reaches there and is playing with a child but Siong kicks his face and falls him to the ground. He then tells the children that they are closing the academy and asks them to go to their homes. In the meantime, Groundhog tries to attack him but Kim comes in between and grabs his hand. He becomes happy to see him there because he was looking for him for a long time. But Siong attacks him again and again and takes him down. He looks like he is flying here and there and beats every one of them while they are unable to catch up with his speed. But they are shocked when they get to know his name, as he is national representative and a legendary athlete. He is so good at Taekwondo that even North Korea invited him to join them. And now he takes Kim with him and they both run away from there. While running, they think of what they should do first and suggest they should get him treated first but he refuses. They take a van and drive it away. But the van is looking like a base station from the inside and Siong asks him to adjust the frequencies and get into the base station. Soon, he finds the location of his daughter's mobile phone which is a little far away from there. After some time, they reach a place where a large number of students were standing at the gate, and it looked like they were waiting for them, and they belonged to the worst high school in all of South Jungjido, Mabuk High School. Siong asks him if he is sure his daughter is there and their vice head. Ijin asks them what they want and tells them that they are gathered here to fight another crew and asks them to leave if they don't want to get hurt. But they don't listen to him and enter the school and Kim tells him that Minji's location is on the first floor of the centermost building and a left turn at the entrance. Ijin furiously grabs his collar but Kim attacks him back and falls him to the ground and then puts his shoes on his chest and asks him about her daughter, Minji Kim, and tells them that she was wearing a black blazer and a red tie. He warns them to stay out of this if they had not seen her there, on the other side. A man tells their leader that there is some noise outside but he thinks they are fighting with other crew members so he asks him to let it be. Meanwhile, Kim starts beating all of them and he is so strong that three or four are taken down with just a single punch. While the other crew members are just watching them quietly, Siong reaches there and asks them if they have seen a girl named Minji Kim. But they get angry on seeing him there and one of them tries to attack him with his knife, but he dodges his attack. He then swings in the air and they are surprised how he can stay in the air for a long time. Suddenly, their vice head Hyunjin Jai appears there and has an axe in his hand and asks Seong to attack him but he also takes him down with just one kick. He then tells them that he is going to the central building and they reveal that the area belongs to their main office. Meanwhile, 
Kim also reaches there and takes both of them down. Meanwhile, their head also reaches there and asks them who they are and why they are beating up their man. He comes forward to attack Kim but he grabs his hand and swings him through the air to fall him to the ground. After a while, the door of the main office breaks and he enters there with their leader, and they get scared by thinking the police have come to catch them up. But they feel relaxed to see an old man there and think he is a teacher at the school. Kim observes the room and he saw two cartons filled up with cell phones. And on the other side, there is a boy who seems to be their leader and has Minji's mobile in his pocket. He reaches to the boy and asks him where he got this cell phone and he replies that she is the girl from last night. Kim gets so much furious to hear this. He starts beating him and slaps him until he begs him for life and requests him to let him go. Seong asks him to stop because at this rate, he will die and asks him if he has seen his daughter and he replies him that he was just lying and had never seen her before. He reveals that his friends stole the phone for him and they took a lot of cell phones to him and he unlocked all of them and got rid of every protection on them. He also separated the girl's phones and one of them was Minji's phone so he kept that with him. The only number she had on the phone was her dad and they call him mistakenly. He also tells her that in her messages, there was someone named Hyer Yong, and he remembers she was her only friend of her and last time, she told him that she was going to her home. But now, when he reads their conversation, he gets to know that she was not her closest friend, but was using her like a tool and taking money from her on regular basis. Back in school, she came to her one day and asked her to borrow her phone as she wanted to talk to her boyfriend and that her phone was taken away by her parents. Now, he regrets that he didn't know anything about how she lived and the girl whom she called best friend was just using her for clothes and money. He regrets why he didn't catch up earlier as she must hurt a lot and kept all this in her heart and never shared anything. Seong says they need to find her first and then he can apologize to her for not giving her the attention that she required. He then grabs the collar of the boy and asks him where he got this phone and he tells them about the man who sells them this kind of food. He shows him the cell phone and tells him that a boy gave them his contact number. He tells them that he has seen a man throwing some stuff on the road and he found this mobile phone. After that, some gangsters came to him and snatched the cell phone from him. Kim asks him if he remembers their plate number or faces but he doesn't remember anything about them. Kim grabs him from his collar and asks him to tell him anything that can be helpful for him to catch those gangsters and he just replies that they had a BMW car and one of them was bald. Seong asks him to move as this is more than enough info for them and seems like he doesn't know anything else. On the other side, the crew members take Minji's body near a beach and their boss asks them to put her in a rug because it's been hours since she dies so her body starts to smell. They put her in a room freezer and the delivery is done and all that is left is the money coming from Chairman Ju. He exclaims that he is an animal wearing human skin and all of his life, he had dreamt of taking revenge against him. And now, his daughter went and killed someone and it is time for him to take his revenge. On the other side, Kim asks Seong to get hurry as they will lose them if it's any longer and they rush towards some other place. On their way, Kim gets access to the all security cameras in that area and runs that homeless man's face through the facial recognition program. Through his facial recognition, he finds the footage of the last night. They saw someone getting out of the car and they get his facial recognition. His name is Sangmin Kim, 41 years old and convicted twice, but he doesn't own a car which means it was a rental car or maybe he works for the car owner. Suddenly, a car strikes their van and they lost their balance but in the meantime, Kim checks Sangmin's location and finds that he is currently in the Western Sea, South Korea and 9.2 kilometers away from their current location. The van gets turned downward and Groundhog appears from the car and has a gun in his hand. They both are seriously injured and Kim is about to get out of the car while Seong tries to stop him but he says if they leave him be, he is going to follow them to the ends of earth, so he is going to kill him there. But after some time, Seong gets out of the car and he asks him about Kim but he doesn't answer him. In a moment the van behind him gets explode and Groundhog is in a state of shock to see that. Meanwhile, Kim runs away behind the fire so that he can't see him while running and he asks Seong about what he is planning to do. He comes forward and grabs the gun from his hand and kicks him back. He gets up and shoots him but he dodges the bullet and hides himself behind the fire. He reloads his gun and shoots him again but Seong swings in the air and attacks him from behind. He kicks his face but he takes out his knife and tries to attack him but he grabs his hand in time and attacks him back. Groundhog sees his men coming toward them, but in the meantime, Seong swings in the air 
and prepares his leaping roundhouse kick and hits his face with full power. This causes both of them to fall from the bridge and his men were astonished to see this. On the other side, Kim reaches the place where they kept Minji's body. Meanwhile, there is a little movement in the rug and she gets out of it alive. She beats the door violently and calls for help but no one listens to her and the temperature there was too cold. Suddenly, the door unlocks and someone enters there while she gets scared to think they may be gangsters again. She was true as the crew leader enters there and is talking to someone on the call. She tries to hide behind the boxes, and he notices someone's footprints there and wonder who came there recently. Meanwhile, the guard whom they tried to kill earlier attacks him, but he grabs him again and takes out his knife and stabs it in his stomach by saying he should have been careful of whom he was dealing with. Suddenly, his phone starts ringing but it is placed near Minji and she is trying to hold herself. The old security guard falls near her and pushes the mobile phone to a distance which is then grabbed up by the gangster and he doesn't notice her. He then reveals that he has come there to click a nice picture of the girl's body so that he can blackmail the chairman later. In the meantime, he receives a call from the chairman. He tells him that he heard of everything that happened and that his daughter is indebted to him and then he calls him to talk in person. He also offers to head right into business without any hesitation which he agrees immediately and is ready to meet him as soon as possible. He then asks him to meet him alone and get him 2 billion won and asks him to make sure that his manager doesn't interfere in this matter. After hanging up the call, he asks his manager to cash out 500 million won as he is going to end this right now. The gangster gets out of the room and Minji gets relieved. Suddenly, he bends down to pick up something from the floor when he sees her through a small hole. He rushes toward the door but she closed the door immediately and puts a stick in the door handle. He tries to call his men but before they pick up his call, Kim reaches there. They ask him about his identity and what he wants from them, but he shows them Minji's cell phone and asks where she is. When they don't receive his call, he calls some other men and asks them to come to their office as soon as possible and asks Min Kang to come to the refrigerator house. He again tries to call Sangman but he is lying there in injured form. Meanwhile, Kim is running behind the other one who wonders how he can be so strong and fast. Soon, he caught him and kicks him while he tries to explain to him that they just received a call and transferred the body and that she was already dead. Kim asks him about who is dead and who Chairman Ju is. He gets so scared that he jumped off the building and because of falling from such a height, he dies immediately. After some time, his men reach there and inform him that they have been attacked but they can't find any one of them there. On the other side, Sandman reaches the car and is about to run away from there but Kim reaches there too and asks him to get out of the car. He grabs his collar and gets him out of the car and he tells him that she is in the refrigerator warehouse and they dumped her in the cold storage to freeze the body. In the meantime, the leader asks Minji to be as stubborn as she likes, because she can't stay there for a long time because of the extremely low temperature. He then offers her to make a deal with him and asks her to get outside, and then he will let her go. She says he is lying and will kill her the moment she steps outside and she just saw him killing someone before her eyes. He takes out his knife and says he was going to let her live before she said that but now, she has witnessed him killing a man so he can't let her live. Suddenly, his man reaches there and Kim has also accompanied him. He gets shocked to see him and asks what has happened to him. Kim comes forward and asks him where his daughter is and tries to attack him. But before his attack, a man reaches there and dodges him. They both start fighting and Kim is shocked that he is an expert martial art athlete and is fighting with him. On the other side, Chairman Ju is on his way to reach there and they are about 27 minutes away from the destination. The man asks Kim if he is Chairman Ju when the boss tells him that he is not that person but is a dangerous one, so he should kill him. They start fighting and Kim is surprised to see his power, while they both fold their bodies around each other and try to take down each other. He takes his down while he is trying to resist to get free himself but Kim tells him if he resists some more, his bones will break. After that, he releases himself and says he will kill him this time for sure for the sake of his father while Kim thinks he looks like his daughter's age, so he should spare his life. He attacks him with his knife but he dodges his attack and holds his head between his legs and breaks one of his arms. Kang Nam bites his leg and gets free himself. On the other side, Minji's condition is getting worse and she thinks she is going to freeze to death if she stays there. After some time, the leader opens the door of the room and enters there and wonders why she removed the stuff that was holding the door shut. Meanwhile, Kang Nam again attacks Kim but he pushes him back and says if his daughter was alive and he was on the way to save her, then he would have killed him. But he asks him to kill him because if he goes back there without killing him, his father is going to kill him. 
Kim asks him if he is his father, because if he is then then why he is willing to kill him instead. On the other side, the leader enters the room and thinks she has hidden herself in the rug but she stands behind him and holds a stick. She then attacks him with the stick and hits his head and makes him unconscious. When Kim reaches there, he finds him unconscious there while Minji was not anywhere. He grabs him by his collar and asks him who attacked him and why he is lying there like that. Suddenly, he finds a note written by Minji who tells him that she is scared. He finds that is Minji's handwriting which means she is still alive. He runs away to find her and thinks she must be somewhere nearby. At the same time, Berger locks his master in the warehouse and he is requesting him to get him off but he says he will die there like this. Suddenly, the door opens and he happily gets out of the room but is shocked to see Berger's dead body there and Chairman Ju's men enter the room. On the other side, Kim is shouting for Minji and asks her to just say something if she can hear him. Suddenly, he sees her at the top of a building and tries to call her but she doesn't listen to him at a far distance and asks someone for help. Meanwhile, the chairman's men are torturing him and they take off all of his gold teeth and ask him why he did this as they gave him a last chance to live his life. Back in the past when he was an employee in a small service country that was a part of a construction group, and his job was to declutter the areas set to be redeveloped. One day, his boss called him late at night and started to blabber about something he couldn't understand. Suddenly, he called him forward to show him something and pushed him from the building. Mainly, he wanted that apartment and a man fell from an apartment was great news to defame it. And the next day, the news spread on every news channel. But when he finds out that he was alive, he came to see him in the hospital and apologizes to him for what he did. But he killed him, and after that, he took his place. And at that time, he receives a call that says the chairman wanted to meet him. He then went to meet him and at first glance, he observed that the chairman wanted to kill him, and appeared gentle and friendly toward him. Suddenly, he orders someone a man from behind to bring a little pot. They took out all of his teeth and shoved steaming potatoes and radishes into his mouth so that he realized his position and listened to his owners very well. He then begged before him and said he will do anything for them and will be his dog for his life. After that, he acted like a dog and killed people when he was told to, and got his hands and knees when he was told to. Now, they did the same thing to him and again pulled out his teeth and after that, they decided to give him another chance and asked him to think about it but he doesn't seem to agree with them. But they blackmail him by saying there is a plan from kidnapping and murdering a high school girl to linking this to some of the politicians against them. He became so injured that he was about to die and at his last moments, he tells them that the girl whom they are talking about is alive. After that, the manager orders his men to move fast and find the girl and kill her wherever they find her. On the other side, when Kim reaches the place where he saw her earlier, she had gone at that time. She took a lift from someone but didn't realize that she is sitting in the chairman's car. He orders his driver to wash her up and send her to his room. Meanwhile, Kim calls someone and asks him if his license to kill anyone is still valid which refers to a special immunity given by the government. He was running on the road when Seong reaches there on a motorbike and asks him about the circumstances and he tells him that Minji is alive. They take her to an anonymous place and his driver tells him that only Nam knows where they are and will come to them after completing his tasks. He then calls Minji to his office and asks him what has happened to her as she looks like a lot has happened to him. Suddenly, she looks at his picture with Hyrie and recognizes that he is her father and he asks him if she remembers what happened to her yesterday. She says that she doesn't remember anything and then he asks her about what happened at the warehouse or if she sees a man in there, a man with a short beard, but she says she doesn't remember anything. He then gets up from his seat and comes to him and asks what he should do with her when his daughter tried to kill her yesterday. His driver takes out a syringe and puts it in her hand and makes her unconscious. Meanwhile, Groundhog gets the news that Kim's daughter is in the palace, so he reaches there with his men and they break the gate to enter the house. All the guards gather there and ask them to move back as this is private property, but Groundhog gets out of the car and says they are the government. They enter the house and reach the chairman's office, but he gets surprised to see a man of such power there. He tells him that they need to investigate this place and that they are looking for a suspect and found the news that his daughter is there. They check up on his home, and his men inform him that there is nothing there, but Groundhog says they will be waiting for their six special officers and will leave the place after their inspection. They enter the house but one of the guards was present there when they try to move him away, and punches one of them and falls him back to the ground. He tells them that he has ordered from his boss, so he can't let anybody in the house, and soon, he takes all of them down while Groundhog is shocked to see his men's condition. On the other side, Seong and Kim reach outside the mansion and learn that Groundhog is looking for Minji now, 
which means she is surely there. Suddenly, a man comes to him and tells him that their request for a warrant has been denied, and deputy minister calls them and asks them to come back to bureau. While leaving, he warns him by saying he will come back soon with the authority, and drag him off that high horse of his real soon. When they are leaving, the chairman and his men are all looking at them, and Groundhog asks them to turn off the lights and not to look back because they have Minji with them. Suddenly, a man rushes toward them and they find Minji and some security guards run after them but they get out of the gate. One of them apologizes to him and says when he went there to check, one of six special officers attacked him and took the girl with him. He took her to the underground tunnel and covers his eyes and mouth and after some time, an officer came to her and asks her if she is alright and if she was able to walk. They were moving in many cars meanwhile, Kim appears in one of them. He uses a piece of string to take two of them down and the other car driver notices that there is a problem with them as they are moving rashly. Meanwhile, Kim grabs the neck of the driver and folds the belt around his neck. He then starts driving the car and the other car members try to contact their director but they cut down their radio signal and Groundhog is unaware of everything happening behind. Kim picks up the wireless phone and asks him if he can hear him and warns him to not lay his hands on his daughter otherwise. He will kill them all. Groundhog makes fun and says he can't do anything because they have already reached the headquarters. He says he is waiting for him to come and take his daughter and not to forget to bring him a present when he visits. Meanwhile, Xiong also reaches there under their cars and Groundhog asks them to put Minji in the interrogation room. After some time, they reach the interrogation room but she is still unconscious so he asks his officers to wake her up. When she gets into consciousness, she is shocked to see that she is tied up in a mysterious place, and they ask him some introductory questions. They ask him if she knows what kind of person her father is, and she replies that he is just a normal dad like anyone else. She is in a state of shock when Groundhog tells her that her father was a spy and a freaking notorious man. After some interrogations, he comes to know that Kim decided to come out of hiding over this menial for his daughter and created all this fuss. He becomes furious to know that all fuss happened because the two kids had a fight and if that is the real reason, he will not forgive him. He then orders one of his men to tell the others outside to shoot Kim on sight and pretend it was a mistake because he is a dangerous man and this is the only way to control him. Suddenly, Minji notices someone behind an officer and is shocked that he may be her dad. The officer notices her expression and asks her what she just saw. But she refuses by saying that she didn't see anything and just gazing at the glass. But he gets furious and says no one in the building will come to help her so she just has to cooperate with them. He then goes outside to take a look because he is sure that she saw something behind him. Meanwhile, Xiong holds himself on the roof and before the officer notices him, he attacks him and takes him down. He then enters the interrogation room and asks Minji to let go as it's time to meet her father. They start running and Siang notices some officers there, so they hide at a place while she asks him if he knows the way out meanwhile. Some officers notice them, but before they could react, Siang jumps in the air and attacks one of them, and starts beating the other officers too. On the other side, Groundhog goes to the deputy's office which is yelling at him for creating so many problems for them and how he cleans up his mess every time. He replies that he doesn't take bribes from people as he does and is curious how much he received from the chairman. But the deputy says they have kidnapped a civilian without his permission and the emergency declaration on the building. On the other side, Minji says to Siong that they need to be at the highest level of emergency right now because many army officers reach there and point guns toward them. In this situation, he asks her to run away, but they surround them from all over, and there is no way to escape. In the meantime, Groundhog reaches and asks him what he is doing there, and exclaims that he had already prepared a trap for the person who would come to save her. He then orders his soldiers to take care of him and leave the girl alone, but he is fighting them while protecting the girl. They start beating them, and one of them is about to stab his knife into Minji's eye when Kim reaches there and asks them to stop otherwise. He will kill their deputy officer and put a string in his neck. Minji starts sobbing to see her father, and he consoles her by saying everything will be alright. Groundhog shouts from his place and asks him to stop, but Kim pulls him toward him, and the deputy minister orders everyone not to move and listen to what he says. Kim then asks him to order his men to disarm on the count of three, and all of them obey his order and put their weapons. Groundhog threatens him by saying he is just buying himself time when suddenly, an explosion comes from the parking lot wall, and all of the officers get panic. One is Minji's phone. Groundhog shouts at his men to start picking up their guns and chasing them all. But suddenly, there is another explosion. 
The deputy director asks them not to move because the bomb can explode again. Kim has called another person for their help, and he was the one who exploded the bomb, and now he asks him if he has brought the vehicle, but he says he just came there to help them and didn't bring a vehicle. Groundhog feds up with the situation and shoots the deputy director, saying he can't bear them anymore. He then blames Kim for killing the deputy director and asks his men to go and catch them. They all rush toward them, but the three take them down in a moment, but Groundhog has many soldiers with him. Kim asks his partners to finish all this quickly and asks Minji to stay behind him. After that, they gang upon them, and Kim takes them down, while Minji is shocked to see this side of her dad. Mr. Park tells her that his dad was always like this and she is surprised that he has pasted his daughter's picture on his shirt. He is talking with her about her studies and fighting with the soldiers simultaneously, and tells him that he is worried about her daughter's future because of the sudden change in the school syllabus. Meanwhile, Groundhog is shocked to see his men's condition, and for a split second, he realizes that he has messed up with the wrong guys. He thought he could win against them because he had Beakdun Mountain with him who are in the top 5% that survived their hellish training but they were taking them down by them like a piece of paper. Only about 20 remained, but after taking one more down, they have been reduced to 19, but they are reducing gradually in front of his eyes, and he is shocked when they become so powerful. And soon, he was the only one who was left behind, and he is just staring at them as his full army got defeated by three middle-aged men in glasses who didn't have any scratches on their bodies. And he could only remain frozen when they took his car keys from his pockets, and they were defeated absolutely and undeniably. On their way back, Park apologizes to them for being late and rashly takes out the car in front of two soldiers and they wonder what happened inside. They contacted the central control office and tells them that the building has been breached as the infiltrators have compromised the security and are on the run. Meanwhile, their jeep reaches there and they start shooting at their car and Kim is shooting them back to protect themselves. Minji is shocked to see him fighting and remembers when Groundhog told her that her father was a spy and wonders how a domestic man could be like this. Soon, they get out of the building, and Kim hugs her and apologizes by saying he is sorry for letting her go through this and for not saving her sooner. They think that they are getting out of danger when a truck appears from behind and attacks their car and soon, four trucks surround them from all sides giving them no way to escape. A moment later, the door of the truck in front of them opens. Chairman Ju's security team appears from inside. Another truck from behind pushes their car and takes into another one while Park laughs by saying this is so funny for him and says he will show them how kids have fun these days. Meanwhile, Minji gets scared of all this and Kim consoles her, but he is worried inside for her because their vehicle has been hijacked and now they are in an enclosed space. Soon, they cover their faces and release gas in the vehicle and Kim tells her that she will be asleep in less than a minute, but he will protect her at any cost. They have gassed them for five minutes and think they are all as good as dead as they made the chemical more potent this time. They plan to take Minji with them and then call the police for backup and tell them that they have found a vehicle suspected to be driven by someone under the influence. And then it will turn out that they were carrying drugs and then injected them with the drugs. One of them asks the other to change their clothes so the police won't figure out that they have gassed them to sleep and after that, he will control everything. It's time for their plan's action and one of them enters the car to inject drugs into their bodies, but he doesn't return for a while. And when the other one too goes to check on him, he was lying there unconscious and injured and he also gets shot by them. Suddenly, the door of the truck bursts and Jeep gets out of it and it is Kim who is driving the car, while the head is watching his men losing their balance over Kim and his car. And suddenly, he realizes Seong and Park are standing behind him and he wonders what will happen to him. They were all part of a KL, a multinational mercenary company that operates only for profit, and from kidnapping to terrorism, they did anything as long as they are paid. Their clients include corporations and governments, and the company had a system called Honorable Discharge, and they only had to do one thing to get discharged. To prove someone is worthy of discharge, they must kill every one of a KL's members, and Nam was the only one who was able to discharge from the group. And now, he is getting caught by some ordinary spies, but he punches Mr. Park and falls to the ground. He then starts fighting with Seong but his combat style is more trained than him and he takes out his knife to attack him while Seong thinks he has so much bleeding already and can't afford any further injury. 
Bam attacks him with his knife, but he holds his hand in time while noticing Park unconscious. He pushes him from the truck but he grabs it and tries to come upward while Nam tells him that he has been hit right in the philtrum on Park and he died on the spot. Kim is taking his car again toward the truck but Seong forbids him to come there and asks him to take Minji and get as far away from there as he can. Meanwhile, Nam notices Park standing behind him and tries to punch him again, but this time, he holds his hand. He then dodges his every attack and not even a single punch gets him so, he decides to aim his stomach. But Park again dodges him and punches his face, Nam feels like he collided with a truck. He again gets ready to attack him and Park asks him to come and this time, he will take him seriously and he will teach him what it is to be a man. Park jumps upon him and starts beating him up while Nam wonders to see his powers and thinks she is using the same CQC style as he does but he just can't reach him. And when he finally realizes that he can't beat them, he decides to run away from there but when he tries to jump from the truck, Kim reaches there in front of him. Park reaches him and grabs him from behind and smashes his head with the wall of the truck. After that, they stop the truck at some place, and Kim gets out of his car and asks them to take care of Minji for a while because from now on, he is going to take care of this on his own. Chairman Ju is waiting for them at a beach and Kim thinks he will teach him who the more significant helicopter parent between them is. His secretary tells him he is coming so he asks another manager CEO to take his care. He comes forward and tries to block his path, but soon, Kim takes him down in front of his eyes. This time, two more come to attack him, but he starts beating them while the chairman is shocked to see his men's conditions. He then reaches Ju and calls him Hyrie's father and asks him to chat with him because he owes an explanation to him. But he counter-questions him about where he learned a martial art or something or if he belongs to some special unit or what he is going to do with him now. He then offers him to work for him and he will pay 100 million won per month because nothing is more miserable than being a penniless breadwinner in this country. But when he refuses his offer, he takes out his court and gets ready to fight, and suddenly, punches Kim's face. He then threatens him by saying if he wants to fight like a man, then he should punch him but after that, he will make his life hell for him and his daughter. But he is shocked when Kim punches his face with his full might because his daughter's safety was at stake because of this man and tells him that he is the first ever agent in the North Korean spy unit. Bikdu Mountain and Code 66 is his name. He then asks them to punch each other one after another until one of them dies. Soon, he punches him again and Ju falls into the pool. And he holds his hair and drags him upward and asks him to wake up because he went easy on him. At that time, he realizes what humiliation looks like but after gathering so much power, he again gets up to fight. He punches his face in an exchange. He punches him back in this time. He starts bleeding from his mouth and falls to the ground. He then gets up, shows him his contact list, and says he has the contacts of top influencers in the country and can ruin him with just a single call. But Kim takes out his phone and calls someone and asks him if he can close giant constructions. The other person replies that he can't shut down it completely but he can do something close to that within a day Ju is in a state of shock and asks him whom he is talking to on the phone. He furiously punches him and asks him what he has done but Kim punches him back and Git remembers that they were playing a game. Meanwhile, Minji gets into consciousness and Seong asks her not to hate her dad so much as he is just not good at expressing his feelings but she is his everything. Park comes to her and asks if she wants to know their secret which is about her father and how he got cool and awesome friends like them. He exclaims that their past was very different from today, and they were three different men with different lives. At that time, North Korea was the most isolated country in the entire world and that's where he was born. One day, a major came to them and asks the students to raise their hands who were the fastest and strongest in the class and then asked them to fight. Kim was the one who won against all so they asked him to go outside and get in their car. Later, they tortured him for a few weeks and asked them to not use their names, and gave them their code names. About one month later, their names were completely beaten out of their hands and they have their very tough training. Every day, they poisoned them and threw them in the water with their hands tied and if someone fell during their training, they didn't give them food. They went through three years of training and at that time, they were made good friends and considered each other's brothers. The following night, they were deployed to their operation right away but when they entered their targeted place, there was a bomb already planted which exploded as soon as they entered the house. His comrades died in front of his eyes, but they arrested him and sent him to a confidential military facility, where they asked him to fight with their elite man Park then they would appoint him as their officer. 
After that, they had a fight there and soon they destroyed the office while the officer asked them to take it outside but Park declared that he is quitting the fight. Two years later, they asked him to become a South Korean spy and it was their chance to pay back the country that abandoned him and to prove that he was purely South Korea now. Major asked him to serve the country and then he would take him as his son but at that time, he didn't know that behind his nice and gentle facade was an ulterior motive he came to discover later. When he reaches there, he realized that he is unwelcome in both South and North Korea, and they were planning to get rid of him after the mission is over. So, when they were coming back after the mission, his comrade put the gun on his head and said someone wanted him dead and tried to kill him but he attacked all of his comrades and killed them. North Korean army arrested him and tortured him later, while he was sick of everything and wanted to give up. Later, an officer took him with him and they let him go but with the condition that he couldn't go out of the base and take a rest for a few days. Ironically, North Korea was the first country to give him freedom and he was standing all alone on the road when a girl came to him and asks why he is blocking the road. He met her there and fell in love at first sight and it didn't take them too long to express their love. One day, the officer called him and asks him why he has been close to the girl in the town and that he had the orders to kill both of them. He made him a deal that he will protect the girl and in exchange he had to kill someone for him and his target was the eldest son of the supreme leader. On the other side, Park received the orders to kill the eldest son for the sake of their country and peace. Meanwhile, Seong appeared on the site and he also had a mission to kill him but it was unidentified that for whom he worked. Kim reached a semi-governmental hotel in Herbin. China and declared that he had come there for vacation. He asked the receptionist for room 1306 but that was already occupied by Park. He then asked for room 1506 but it was occupied by Xiong, and they both are planning to complete their missions. They give him the room that is already booked for the son of the supreme leader and asked him to vacate the room within one week meanwhile. Park had put bugs in the room and could hear all of their conversations. On the other side, Seong has already put bugs in the room and Kim knew that they are watching and listening to his activities so, he calls them and said they had the same mission and invites them to the bar beside the plaza. At night, he was waiting for them when Park reached there and he asked him what he was doing there and he replied that he had to do some kind of business there. They were talking to each other when Seong reached there and recognized them immediately because they were the most suspicious ones in the club. Park suggests they should not make any noise or do anything that would draw people's attention and on being inquired, Seong tells them that he had come there to kill and asked them to not interrupt his mission. Park exclaimed that he had come there to kill the same person and no one could stop him to achieve his mission but Seong got furious about this and broke the table. They both started fighting and beating each other when Kim asked them if the people from South Korea were always been that playful, and that their childish plays were interrupting a man who was itching to accomplish this mission. Meanwhile, a lot of people gathered there and their leader Yong and asked them why they were making a fuss at his area and from where they belonged and they all replied together that they belonged to Korea. Within a few minutes, they changed the condition of the club and took all of them down police reached there and asked them to surrender. But they escaped from there in no time and they were shocked at how they can run so fast. Kim came outside after three days and sat in the lounge when Seong reached there and told him that he also came after three days while Kim asked him to not come near him with his weird clothes. After some time, Park also got outside and sat with them, and Kim asked them if they had any plans to accomplish their mission. Seong said he would kill the man because he belonged to him and they also wanted him to die so it didn't matter from whose hands he died. But Kim said the same thing and told them that he had his reasons meanwhile. Their target entered the hotel and asked the receptionist for the same room he always took but she told him that the room is already occupied and he was shocked who could afford the most expensive room in the hotel. The three of them hide and they realized that it was getting harder for one person to finish the job so they should get teamed up and they agreed to cooperate just on this. The three of them connected very well so much so that it was surprising for them also, and the day arrived to complete their mission. They reached in front of the hotel three hours before the operation. One guard saw them but Seong took him down. Park got in there and called the guards by saying there are intruders outside and all of them rushed outside and didn't notice him. Meanwhile, a guard reached him and punched his face while Seong and Park were fighting outside. One of the security members recognizes him as he was a Taekwondo champion in Korea. And Kim took advantage of the situation and tried to take the target down by himself. Soon, he reached room 306 but among the bustling men in uniforms, he found her. 
She was waiting for him while he asks her what she is doing there but she asked him to get down there as they had something to talk about. The people there noticed that she was talking to someone but he headshots them and killed them at the spot. After getting down, he asked her to explain everything but a man came there and told him that the girl was just a puppet and was using him all the time because she had been given a task by someone else. He belongs to the South Korean security team Daniel and revealed that was just a trap set by him and now, they had caught him. After that, he took out his gun and said they didn't need her anymore so she had to die and was about to shoot her when Kim pushed her and saved her while he was also confused about what got into his head at that moment. He then asked him if they kill every one of them there, can they leave that place alive? He asks him to go and try as their security team is one of the strongest teams in the world and there was no chance that he could defeat them but before he could respond. He shoots him twice and made him unconscious. He thought Kim had died, so he handed over his gun to the girl and asked her to kill herself. She took the gun and was about to shoot and exclaimed that she truly loved that man but she had to die to show her loyalty toward the party and shot herself. But the gun was empty and the guard clapped and said she had proved her loyalty and could be used for further missions. On the other side, Park was fighting with other team members and Seong ran away toward the targeted room and left him there. When he reached there, he saw the guard was coming outside with the girl and realized that it was all a trap set up for them. He shoots him too, but he jumped backward and dodged the bullet and asked her about the boy who came there a moment ago and why the two were walking out of the room. But he again shot him and said he had killed the guy who came earlier and made a hole in his chest. But he is shocked at how that could be possible because they all wore bulletproof jackets before coming to the mission. In the meantime, Kim appeared behind the guard and kicked at his stomach and said she is his woman and he will protect her at any cost. But he laughed at him and said the girl is not human but a doll who has been trained to live like this for her entire life. He then pushed him back and kicked him by saying they had 76 additional agents who have reached outside the building. On the other side, Park defeats a giant monster and was just celebrating his win when the agents reached him. He ran from there and reached the place where the two were and asked them what they have done. He told them that the gangsters from the restaurant had come there to get them and the agents were trying to stop them all and they said they have received a call from one of them. Seong stated that he was the one who called them because he wanted to catch enemies by using the enemies. They both got together and fought with the guard and took down. He asked them if they tree had great teamwork and if they are brothers or something and again jumped upon them. While fighting with them, he asked the girl to pass him the gun and shoot them. She picked up the gun and shoot while all the people outside got shocked to hear the sound of the gun while she had shot the guard right at his neck. Meanwhile, the police reached there and arrested all of them while the girl told him that if he took her with him, he will get arrested. Seong grabbed his neck and said they are taking him with them and asked the girl to find her way out. But Park made her unconscious and took them with them and they both promised to help them. Seong took them to a laundry place which was run by a Korean and was sure that he would help them and he was the owner of a pawn shop. He asked them if they were responsible for what happened in Harbin and that everyone knew that they had an assassination attempt on the North Korean successor. He then asked them what they were doing there and Seong asked him to do laundry for them and get them new identities. But he asked them to play a game with them and will help them if they won. The game was to beat him in drinking, but no one could beat him in 50 years of his history. Kim was the first challenger and Seong asked him if he was sure that he can do this and he replied that the bottles were nothing compared to what he had gone through in training. But he was taken down after just two shots and Park was the next candidate. But after three boxes, he was at his limit and was holding up because he refused to lose. But, he lost after some time but he was happy that he had a good competitor after a long time and a waitress told him that they ran out of booze. He then made them an offer that he would let Seong and Park go but will not allow Kim and the girl. But he said that is pointless if they help them out but not him. He then bowed before him and requested him to help him and his friends as they could not leave them behind. He then agreed to help them and arranged a ship for them in which they had to leave North Korea, but the girl would take another ship two days later. While leaving, she gave him her picture and promised him that they would meet again but he didn't have any idea that the farewell would be the last one. Ten years later, he became the sergeant known as Sergeant Kim and a founding member of the Bikdu Mountain. Major General was very happy with his performance but he felt empty and resorted to all kinds of methods to find her for the last 10 years, but couldn't find a single trace of her. Once his watch got broken, so he went to a watch repair shop and his wife told him that she saw the same girl who does volunteer work like her, and she was the same girl whom he had been finding for 10 years. He went to her for food but when she saw him, she got shocked and Kim just said he found her at last. 10 years ago, she told the man to send her somewhere else because she thought she would just be a burden to him. She got scared that she would harm him if she stayed with him and Kim started crying and hugged her. 
but he was caught by his party and they arrested him for making contact with a volunteer. But he tried to save her by saying she was just a one-night stand girl, and he didn't have any relations with her. After that, he got the punishment for meeting her was banishment to a nameless island in the West Sea, and had to wait for the deployment for an indefinite period. There was nothing else to do but train over and over again. It was practically a prison for him but he was happy that she was safe and sound and he could meet her again. One day, Mr. Cho called him and told him that his girl was pregnant. She was in an emergency room and had gotten into the hospital without any guardian. When he reached there, they handed him over to his daughter and informed him that the girl had died and left a message for him before her death and named the girl, Minji. She asked him for the favor to forget the life he has lived and lived as a father to Minji. Later, he asked his unit to let him go and they gave him a task to save the president for within 12 hours who has been kidnapped and they would let him go. But he told them that he will find him in just three hours. He asked them to give him the location of the supreme leader and he will make him hostage to find the president, and they would exchange hostage for hostage. Within one hour, he kidnapped the chairman and took him in his car while other soldiers were following him but they couldn't attack them because their one wrong move can harm the chairman. Meanwhile, peace minister came there and yelled at him major because his officer kidnapped the chairman and he thought it was all his plan. He slapped his face and said he will be responsible if things lead to the war, they were talking when suddenly. A soldier told them that they had a call from the kidnappers. They pick up the call and told him that if he did anything to their president, they would shred their chairman into such tiny pieces that they won't even recognize him. After one hour, both sides of the armies reached the Imjin River classified bridge, and they noticed a car without a number plate coming toward them and they confirmed that it was chairman's car. The car was so speedy that it strikes the bridge and was now about to fall and the soldiers rushed to rescue the chairman. But Kim asked them to stop and told them that he had planted a bomb in the car and asked them to bring the president first, then he would hand over him. On the other side, they already knew about Kim's plan so some agents visited the hospital and asked the nurses to hand over the kid to them. They created a mess there and started to break everything and check all the rooms to get the baby. Meanwhile, Seong reached there and said he had come there to take his family. An agent thought he was a patient so he asked him to go somewhere else as the hospital was closed but he punched his stomach and made him fall and said he would just take the child and leave. After taking all of them down, he got the baby and thought she just looked like her mother. Meanwhile, the chairman tried to threaten him by saying his life would be over after the mission but he didn't bother him and he got informed that a car was coming toward the Panmunjom. Kim asked the chairman if he knew how to swim and dropped the car into the water. On the other side, a military chopper appeared there and Park jumped from it. After getting into the water, he saw Kim swimming with the chairman, so he started following them. But he got far away and gave him to them and they were relieved that he was alright. After that, they blasted all the routes going outside, so that he could not escape out of the forest. He wonder how they reacted so quickly. Soon, they found him and one of the officers shots his shoulder. He was taken down by Unit 51 primary forces and they asked him to surrender otherwise. They would kill him. But they were shocked when Park reached there and asked him how he ran as fast as he almost lost him. Soon, he took all of them and saved Kim while all the officers were lying there unconscious. After that, they made a boat and the officers were tailing them but Park didn't accompany him and promised him that he would come back alive. They come back to the present when he is telling her the story and she is in a state of shock and asks him how much of his story is true. He suggests she go and ask her dad about the meaning of Code 66 add the people they met from all over. Meanwhile, the police reached there and asked them if they called them and Kim hugged her and apologized by saying that things have gotten out of control and she might have to transfer schools because of him. Many days have passed since then. She and her dad have lived the hustle and bustle of everyday life and Kim was so busy cleaning up all the stuff that has happened. She is currently living with Seong and he is taking good care of her, and he is going somewhere for an interview. He reaches Biko HRM and it was Mr. Cho who recommended him there. The place was looking like one of those delivery companies, but he is sure that it is not an ordinary place as Mr. Cho sent him there. He opens the door and calls somebody by saying he has an interview there but his mind got frozen to see what was happening inside there. A man appears at the door and asks him if he has brought his resume but he is still in a state of shock to see such a huge man in front of him. His name is Daju Lee and takes him inside his office he is reading his resume and asks him what is his last name but Kim just had only one name. He gets angry about this and asks him to get out of there and slams his door at him. He was about to leave when he remembers Cho's words that he has to clean up his mess and Lee is the only person who can help him. So, 
He again comes back to his door and asks him to interview him again and he asks him to come and attack him. Kim attacks him with his full might and punches him again and again and makes him fall but he is still laughing by saying he has blown up. He again punches him but he holds his hand and asks him why he is not giving him his best and pushes him back by saying he needs his full power and energy. Kim gets up and asks him if he can use a weapon against him to which he agrees happily, but he punches him again this time. He gets blown and hurt and he asks him if he can kill a man during an interview. They both start fighting to see who killed whom and Lee tells him that he mostly looks for the willingness to do anything for money in his interviews and punches him. Kim asks him what the benefits of the job are if he works there and he tells him about four major insurance schemes and also pays the taxes of their employees. He then tells him that he has passed the first interview and the second interview is to protect the client. He is about to punch a kid and he may die with his punch so his job is to protect him and the kid starts crying. He takes his hand near the boy but when Kim doesn't react, he punches into the wall. They were still fighting when the deputy director comes to them and says they have enough with the interview and has gotten a case. The case is about the granddaughter of the former deputy prime minister and satisfied with all of their conditions and they have to find his daughter who went missing. She is a high school student but it looks like she has caused some trouble in and out of the school and was forced to transfer schools several times. It has been a month since she has vanished but strangely her parents keep receiving texts from her but when they call, she doesn't pick it up as all the communication is via texts only. Lee suggests his man give the case to the new guy and that man is their family now, and he is very stronger than everyone there so they have to call him manager. The next day, at the Yongshin High School, the teacher enters the class and asks the students to take their seats but they are too stubborn that they don't listen to him. One of the students throws a bottle toward him and the teacher tells them that he is quitting his job and there is a new teacher who will teach them from now on. Mr. Kim has come there as a teacher because it is the client's demand, and they contacted other companies too but it didn't go well. He was about to introduce himself when a student threw a chair toward him and asks him if he will fight with him and told him that the students in this school don't respect the teacher. His name is Hyung Ti Kim and is famous as a teacher killer. He tries to punch him but Kim dodges his attack and asks him to dress up tidily for the next time because he is a student. Another student comes there and tries to kick him but Kim dodges him too by sitting on the ground and makes him fall by pulling his leg. After some time, he took down all the students and they were laid down there injured and shocked at what just had happened to them. Kim asks them to take their seats if they are done. After that, he is teaching in the class while they are sitting there quietly and listening to him. After taking his class, he announces that he will again take history class since they have kicked out their math teacher, and leaves the class by saying he will get back soon for their next lesson. He goes to the bathroom and some students followed him there and have taken another student to beat him up. Two students rush toward him to attack and he turns back by saying the bathroom is only for faculty. On the other side, a manager told the former prime minister that Biko HRM just called to tell them that they have begun with the mission and will find the girl soon. Meanwhile, Kim has beaten them all and they apologize to him as they didn't know he was that strong and he asks them to make a deal with him and help him to look for someone. They bow before him and say he can trust them and will do their best. After that, they are working for him and clear his path from other students. They ask him how they can help him and he tells them that they just need to become a woman and act like them. He asks them to assume they are a woman and ghost everyone and go off the grid for over a month, then what they would do and they reply that they will try to run away from there. He then shows them the picture of the girl and asks them to find every trace of her, and they need to find her boyfriend, school life, close friends, and the places she hangs out after school. They start to run and know that the girl in the picture is Jun Seong's girl, and wonder why she has to be his girl out of all girls and plan to get off the scene for a while because they can't involve with Jun Seong. They were running to get out of there when Kim catches their speed and caught them and again beat all of them. They start to apologize again and says they didn't want to get involved with Jun Seong. On the other side, he is fighting with some people at the club and beating a man madly. The students tell him that he is a real monster and that teachers like him should be extra careful, even if he can fight somewhat well, and he gets murdered by someone. After some time, Jun Seong was torturing someone when his boys tell him that some men have come to meet him and they call themselves his school friends. They state that they are from the Lawless District crew at Yongshin High School and have come there to ask him something. 
Also, they can fight him to make him answer. One of them comes toward them to attack, but Kim reaches there and strikes them to push them back. They are all shocked to see him and wonder how he could fight like that when he is just an old man with some glasses. He shows them the picture of the girl and says he knows that her boyfriend is present there and asks him to get out until he counts to three. But before that, one of them tries to strike him with his stick but the vice head of PH Crew Kang appears there and saves him from the attack. They have also accompanied Seong Ho Shin head of the crew coalition and all of his men congratulate him on his release while he asks them what they are doing there in another group. Now, they all have become together to screw Jun Seong's gang and all of them start fighting. Meanwhile, Kim and Jun Seong are just staring at each other. He then tries to attack Shin but he dodges his attack and punches him back. He then takes out his knife and is about to kill him when Kim reaches there and saves him. He then asks him if he is okay and at that moment Shin realizes that the middle-aged man who fights well is cooler than he thought. Jun Seong runs from there and Shin asks them to lose him for a moment, and then he will head toward his hideout. He enters a home where the granddaughter of the Deputy Prime Minister Dae Ong An is already there, and she asks him why he has come back so early. He tells him that some people ganged upon him because of her. They were just talking when someone enters the house and they get scared to see him. After some time, Kim reaches there with Shin and they are surprised to see the door is already open. It looks like someone got there before they did and he is human rights activist, Hajun Jang, and is fighting and torturing Jun Seong and asking him for his money. He has borrowed 100 million won for his business plus 350 million won as interest. Meanwhile, Kim reaches there and tells him that he is looking for someone. He then notices the girl and asks her if she is on and holds her arm to take her with him by saying her parents are looking for her. But she says that she will only leave if he takes her boyfriend with him too but Kim says he is doing what he is paid to do and the boy is not included in the payment. But Jang puts the knife on An's neck and says he can't take her with him. But Kim kicks him and flew him away on the floor. On the other side, the manager tells the grandfather that they have received a call from Biko HRM and they inform them that they have found the girl, and he is shocked how they can find her so soon. On their way, the girl asks him who sent him there and Kim doesn't know about that and says he just received a call and is doing what he is told. He takes her to her parents who are very happy to see her and they ask where she had been all the time. Kim remembers when she asked him to answer a question and asks him about what is the number of factors that kills teenagers in the entire history of South Korea and tells him that it is a suicide and that she dislikes her family. When he comes back, Mr. Lee throws a party for him for completing his first mission and tells him that he had a bet with Yong Chiol and it was whether he could accomplish his first mission within a month or not, and he has won the bet. He then gave him a break of three days and asks him to go and finish up what he left off back in the school. On the other side, An's parents are asking her what made her want to run away from home but she apologizes to them by saying she will never do that again. Kim is doubtful about a few things. First, the payout was way too much when the job wasn't very hard and An's father's constant emphasis on confidentiality means he was trying to hide something. He then calls Minji and tells her that he is working in a high school as a temporary teacher, while all the students bow before him and call him their boss. On the other side, An attacks her mother and bites at her ear, and when her father stops the car she runs away by saying she will never go back home otherwise, she is going to be killed there. Meanwhile, Yong Chiol tells Lee that he has found a lot of people for her grandfather in the past and all of them were found dead after some time. Lee is sure that he is hiding something from them but they are not the murderers as they just find them not kill them but this time. He believes that he will not kill his granddaughter. Meanwhile, Kim checks her clear student record but he notices two homeroom teachers have been replaced just within a month looks like someone took action because something went wrong. She again reaches Jun Seong's apartment and says he knows why she can't go back home. About last winter, she took her mother's credit card and registered it on her mobile phone but she was surprised to see her balance and found the name of a hotel she didn't recognize. At first, she thought she went to meet someone in the hotel but she went to the same hotel after a few days, and she thought to tell her father but it would hurt him. She then asked her trustworthy employee to spy on her mother and he agreed to follow her in secret and let him know if something was off. A few days later, Kim was fired and had to leave her house, but she was sure that he must have gotten caught while he was spying on her mom. That was the time when she started to lose her way. She thought her mother was a user and her father was an infinitely poor man. At that time, she was forced to transfer schools a few times, and she was so sick that she asked her homeroom teacher for help with her mother's affair. But after a few days, he filed for a leave of absence and was replaced. But the same thing happened to the second teacher that followed. One day, she asked her mom to borrow her phone for a while and synced her phone's gallery. 
but she just found food pictures and nothing else. Then suddenly her grandfather knocked at her door. He asks him why she had not been listening to her parents those days and she started crying and told him that her mother was cheating on her father and told him the whole thing. He got furious and she told him that she had access to her credit card history and he assured her that he would do it as quietly as possible and asked her to not think about it anymore. She got relieved and thought she would have told him earlier and showed him the picture of the food she found in her mother's phone. Suddenly, she got shocked when she noticed the picture of her mother with her grandfather in a spoon's reflection. He also noticed that she has seen something and her heart was racing like it was going to explode. But he acted like he didn't notice and said he can dig up a hotel VIP in just a few hours. At present, Jun Seong asks her why she has come to him. But she starts crying by saying she has nowhere to go and no one to help her out. On the other side, Yoon Chiol calls Kim and forbids him to help her out because whatever happened after the case is irrelevant to them. Meanwhile, Jun Seong is beating and torturing her by saying his life has been ruined because of her, and his business got messed up badly. He then grabs her by her neck and says he will sacrifice her to pay his debts. After some time, Kim reaches there with the students but they have not found anyone there. He notices a shoe there that was worn by On earlier and observes that there must have been a struggle there. At the same time, Jun Seong calls her mother but it's her grandfather who picks up the call and says she needs to go to the hospital but they have got no money. He asks him to send him about 1 billion won and will kill her daughter if they don't listen to him. But grandfather says he will not negotiate and no money will be sent to them of course. He was still on the call when Jun Seong tells a man the reason behind On's run away from home that her mother has an affair with her grandfather and he listens to all of their conversations. Suddenly, he changes his tone and says he will send them the money right away. And they should meet up and talk and asks them to send him the location where they want him to send the money. On the other side, Park sends manager Kim who was earlier their enemy and now teamed up with them to help Kim in his mission. September 12th, at 4.25 p.m., at the Jangson intersection, they reach the intersection where the kidnappers wanted to meet it and wait for them to come. The chief of security is addressing them and gives them instructions to tackle the kidnappers and asks them to keep their eyes open. Suddenly, some guys appear there on bikes and one of them hits the man on his head. The other one snatches the bag from him and Jun Seong checks the money they were 1 billion won and is happy that he will not live a new life with this money. Meanwhile, Seong Ho reaches behind him and says he left On's phone behind so, he catches him there and it was easy to follow him. He tries to run away from there but Kim appears from the other side and blocks his path. He then jumps from his bike and kicks at his face to make him fall to the ground. He then asks him where On is but he starts apologizing to them and says he doesn't know where she is and that gangster took her with him. He wants to sell her and make more money and bring her near the ships for trafficking and will hand them over to Yakuza. But they have already sent Mr. Nam there and he says he has come there to put everything on an end. Yakuza comes forward to fight him and punches him but he dodges his attack and kicks him back. He is too strong that Nam has to defend himself with both hands but each attack contains destructive force which means he has been in a lot of fights. Nam says him that he is very good at fight but not better than him and punches at his face and soon he takes him down. He then puts a knife on his neck and asks him where On is and soon finds her. Meanwhile, their boss reaches there and one of them appears from behind and surrounds him. They sent two of their members on the other side to kill Jun Seong and take money from him. Seong Ho comes forward to fight them but one of them tries to stab his knife in his eye but he dodges it and it hits his ear. He realizes that the two of them are dangerous and they can kill him on the spot without any fear. Kim comes there and asks them who they are but they attack him instead of reply but Kim dodges them and punches one of them. The other one gets scared to see him and tries to attack him but he was so scared that he lets his guard down. Soon, he defeats both of them but one of them says he should not get his hopes up because he will not give him any information for the glory of his organization. On the other side, Nam is fighting against the executive who considers one of the strongest men in the organization. And Nam is about to fall and gets defeated because he is more experienced than him. But somehow, he gathers his power and jumps in the air to kick him up but another one comes there and punches his face. After a while, their boss asks him to try to talk it out as he is already injured and asks if there is anyone among the hostages whom he is trying to save. When he doesn't answer him, he goes to them and tries to guess who could the hostage and is testing him by picking up them one by one. 
but he doesn't say a single word, but he is just noticing his reactions. He then starts to kill them one by one and checks his reactions. But at last, he caught her and says she is the one he wants. Nam is thinking if he fights him, will he be able to take him but he knows that he can't win against him, and On is looking at him with helplessness. He then asks him to stop right there and not waste his energy. Meanwhile, Kim is rushing toward them at full speed and reaches the neighborhood site near the sea but it would be very difficult to find them because they do not have the exact location and it will be like to find a needle in a haystack. At the same time, Nam has wiped out every single member by himself including the executives, and only one has remained. He then offers to join hands with him and join his team but Nam refuses by saying someone already made an offer. He then takes out his sword and stabs it in his chest and makes him fall and says he wants to see who will come after him to save him. Seong Ho reaches there and sees some men walking to a side and Kim orders all of them to spread out and find them because there were too many ships and it will take some time to find them. Meanwhile, they tied Nam up when suddenly, they hear some noise and the boss goes to check and is shocked to see a lot of men fighting with the one. But he is stronger than all and soon, he reaches him and starts fighting him. He asks him if he is Nam's partner and if he came to save him. But he is too late as he dies just a few seconds ago. He intentionally left him half dead because he wanted to find out who would show up for him. But Kim asks him if he is sure that they have caught in his trap because the person whom he thought dead is alive. Meanwhile, Nam attacks his men with his legs and grabs one of them and frees himself by breaking the rope. He then fights them and beats them well and after taking them down, he goes to On and asks her to go and says he has come there to take her. They were just talking when a huge man comes there and asks who they are and what is all that noise because he has awakened because of it. Meanwhile, Kim is fighting with the boss and kicks his chest. After falling him to the ground, he jumps upon him. But he again gets up and takes out his sword and says he will do his best to take him down. But Kim runs toward him and passes by in just a fraction of a second. But in this fraction of a second, he broke his blade and took away his sunglasses. Suddenly, someone calls them from behind and this is the huge man earlier, and has Nam's head in his hand who is in a very bad condition while Kim asks him to come down there and fight with him. He throws him out of the ship and he falls in the water. Kim also jumps into the water and finds him and tries to take him out of the water. But many of them reach there and say they will not let them out of the water. One of the members of Team Kim reaches there on a motorbike and there are many other who is beating them. Kim is trying to climb up the ship and his man helps him to climb up but in the meantime, they take away the ship and On is also on the ship. Meanwhile, Seong Ho and another boy departed on that ship and now has stuck there. They find a pistol there and Seong Ho says he will take over the ship and sail it back to the port and will be acknowledged by Kim. Suddenly, the huge man enters the room and they hide themselves behind the doors and a man informs them that a small boat is tailing them. After a while, they see their man lying there unconscious and all of them get panicked while he is asking them to be quiet. He asks everybody to move out and that he will take charge of the ship from now on, and goes to the basement to find the intruder there. Eventually, Kim appears from the left side and kicks him but it doesn't have any effect on him. He asks him to show his full strength and Kim pulls him toward him with his thread and kicks his stomach with his full might. He then attacks him but Kim dodges his attack but he says they are just wasting time because once the ship enters the territorial waters, his men are waiting for their heavily armed. Suddenly, Seong-a and the other guy take charge of the ship and ask their men to not move, but they don't know how to turn back the ship. Suddenly, he presses a button and the ship starts to tilt, and Kim takes advantage of this and kicks him with his both legs. Soon, he takes him down and folds his thread around his neck, and says they will now stop this game and finish up things. Seong Ho is making the ship's condition worse and the men are throwing away from the ship and trying to stop him. Suddenly, he pulls the pedal and water starts to enter the ship meanwhile. The huge man gets freed himself and falls Kim to the ground. He again jumps upon him and punches him again and again and kicks his neck again by appearing from behind. He then grabs him from behind and again hits his neck making him fall. He then drags him from his legs and throws him away by picking him up. On the other side, the grandfather reaches with Mr. Lee who has come there because of the disobedience of Kim and to get him to punish. At the same time, Kim finds On who was there with other dead bodies and hoped for someone to help her. When she sees him there, she starts crying and hugs him and thanks him for saving her. He holds her hand and takes her out of the basement when the other guys start shooting toward the ship. Kim also holds a gun and starts shooting them too. After some time, the ship reaches the port but they don't know how to stop it, and damages some parts of the land Lee says Kim has to pay from his pocket on his first mission. When they get out of the ship, Lee asks him why he has done such mistakes on his first mission because they never make a move unless they are paid to. 
Suddenly, Seong Ho comes to him and informs him that the huge man is still alive and recognizes Lee as they know each other already. Lee punches him so hard that he died on the spot and asks Kim for the last time why he broke his rules. He replies that he couldn't turn a blind eye because principle comes before money. But this thing makes him furious because, to him, money is his principle. He then furiously punches him and falls him to the ground at a distance. He is too fast in punching that Kim has to defend himself with both hands. Suddenly, he ties his tie around his arm and starts punching him as soon as he lost his balance. They were still fighting when Grandfather orders his manager to bring on to him but Seong Ho attacks them when they get near him and says they can't take her without his boss's approval. But one of the guards takes him down but the other guy also gets up and says he will not let them take her. At that moment, she asks her grandfather why he had an affair with her mom and if he doesn't feel ashamed of his son and all of of them start watching them. Grandpa becomes furious and he has called another group called Blue Dragon and asks them to kill everyone present there who knows about his secret. Lee and Kim now have united and many guys surrounded them but they take all of them down in no time in front of their leader. Suddenly, they start shooting him with a taser gun but it is not working on his body. When they realize that nothing will work on him, they surround him from every side. But Kim uses his thread and takes many of them down. Their leader gets angry and says he will show himself and starts fighting with Lee. Lee punches him so hard that it sounds like a cannon and the enemy gets defeated just with this. Grandpa gets scared and says he will increase his pay by 20 times, but he says the cost of shutting his mouth is 30 times their contracted fee. Grandpa says he doesn't have this amount of money but he says he will ask his family to pay instead of him. Meanwhile, An's parents reach there but the guards grab them too, and the chief security puts a knife on her neck and threatens to kill her. Grandpa orders him to kill her but Kim reaches him on time and pushes him back. But Lee comes in between and asks him to let them kill her because he is paying him dozens of times more money. Suddenly, An's mother comes forward and stabs Grandpa from behind and says he has to die like this because he made her life hell. Meanwhile, An's father is shocked and is trying to understand what is happening in front of him. He comes forward and holds her hand and apologizes her to for pretending to be ignorant all those years when he knew everything. After that incident, the grandfather fell into a coma and his son took the blame for everything and just like that, the case seemed to wrap up.